Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Vince. This is Tamia. She's the owner of I Am Natural Hair Beauty Studio. This is Courtney. She is the owner of, you say it for me. I got that Beauty 360. All right. And they have <laughs> stopped by to have lunch with me. We're going to talk hair, all things hair, make ourselves a nice lunch, some jerk lamb chops, some fried cabbage, some glazed plantain. Take us a little ride down to the Caribbean. So stick around. We'll be right back. We're gonna butcher us a, a rack of lamb. So, said you have not uh, cut lamb chops before, so we're just gonna uh, hold it up and run the knife alongside the bone, and you'll cut straight through, like up against the bone. Yeah, that's gonna make it easier. You can use it as your guide. It should be nice and easy, and you'll be able to see the joint. You should be able to cut right through that. Yeah, just push and let the knife do the work. Easy. All right, do a couple more. And believe it or not, it's cheaper to buy the entire rack of lambs versus individual pieces. Really? Yeah, so if you buy the individual pieces, they'll charge you five bucks for each. But if you buy the whole rack, they'll charge you by the pound and it works out to a lot less money. Get the demo one time. <laughs> All right, one more time. So on, on the right side, on the inside, we're just gonna cut and push down and See the joint right there? And then we're just gonna cut through. Oh, okay. This should be, it's supposed to be easy, but we're really missing like that. Oh, okay. You so it's it. supposed to be on this side. Yep. Okay. See? Nice and easy. There we go. Yep. And then you usually use two up two of them together. It's up to you. If you want to have two together, you can have two together or just individual pieces. It cooks a lot quicker if it's individual. So we're using our jerk seasoning. Jerk is not just the seasoning, it's the method for cooking as well. Way down in Jamaica oh. when they were in the mountains void, <laughs> avoiding the soldiers. <laughs> they were hiding and it's a bit of a smoke uh, to it as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, now we have that and we're gonna massage the rest of that seasoning on with the rest of the lamb chops. And then we're gonna get started on the cabbage. Now we're going to put those to the side and we're going to cut the rest of that cabbage into thin strips. Let me get you another pair of gloves. I can tell you work at the beauty salon <laughs> the way y'all took them gloves off. <laughs> like surgeons. <laughs> Surgical. Yes, sir. So to me, tell me about... Uh, I am natural hair beauty. Tell me about yourself first, because I see that you are teen mom, uh, veteran, all of those things. How'd you work your way to hair? So I started in high school trying to pick up cosmetology. And then once I realized that I wasn't doing the things that, um, I wasn't doing the type of hair that I wanted to do, which was like, they were doing more relaxers and- okay things like that, I was I was not interested. So fast so, forward. Court, hold on, we're gonna uh, cut in half real quick. And cut the core out okay. and so on, so on. But um, fast forward. So fast forward, do I cut this yes. part? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fast forward like about 25 years, I was working at the post office and I decided that I wanted to go back to hair school. So in 2020, I started hair school in February 2020, right before the pandemic. Okay. Now, hair school is a specific program. Where'd you go? Is it a specific school? This is like going to Georgia State, or where'd you go? Uh, I went to Empire Beauty School. Okay. It's in uh, Lawrenceville, off of Pleasant Hill. So it's a cosmetology school. It's a cosmetology school. Okay. And I did that for a year. They have a year-long program. Okay. Do you learn about all types of hair, or is it just... Or do you pick what kind of hair you want to do? Um, they learned, they taught us about how to be a licensed cosmetologist, all types of hair. Okay. Color, um, cutting, um, chemicals, anything that we needed to learn so that we could, you know, become a licensed cosmetologist. That's what we did. 
Courtney, did you attend the same program? Yes, um, I'm a native of Chicago, so okay. I went to cosmetology school um, in 2012. Okay. I've always done hair this... and makeup yeah, since I was a kid. That's been I always knew that I wanted to do that. Okay. Um, started off being a kitchen beautician. Uh oh. <laughs> Demonstrating and experimenting on like cousins and friends, and it kind of went from there. Um, had kids, stepped back, went into corporate for a little while, and now I'm back on the train. Do you guys feel like this is what you're most passionate about? Yes. It is. It is. Every job I had, I was always so unhappy and unfulfilled because I wasn't using my talents. Oh. That's how I knew. Okay. <laughs> no matter how much money I was making, no matter how much they paid me, I always wanted to come back to what I knew how to do, which is hair and makeup. Yep. Do you have a preference for people of color in their hair, or do you do everybody's hair? For the most part, uh, we do uh, people of color because it's okay. natural, uh, curly hair. We do a lot of locks. Okay. Um, and it's just like in the area that we serve, it's more predominantly black or African American people of color. Um, that for, comes for to it. For you guys, what is, um, what is natural hair? Like, what does that's, that mean? So, the big debate <laughs> technically, natural hair is the hair that hasn't been altered by chemicals or texturizers or relaxers. Um, even sometimes is if that you, what it is for you too? Yeah, it's definitely um, anything that is not going to alter sorry. alter the curl pattern of your hair. So if it's a relaxer, then it's not natural. Or if it's color, even, you know, it's not natural, so to speak. So if I get the blonde tips, I don't have natural hair anymore? Um, you do, <laughs> but it just, it's, it's, it's pretty much like... It's you saying that you ha you have natural hair, mm -hmm. but you've altered it. So you still have natural hair. You've just done things that has made it, you know, not so natural anymore. Okay. So you've you've altered it. That's a big debate. Yeah. Because a lot of people who have bleach hair or colored hair still consider themselves it. natural. And the technical term, if it's altered in any way, it's in not way, natural. It's not natural. But do you guys I consider digress. it natural? Like, do you consider it natural? I consider myself I consider being natural, natural, even though I have uh, colored hair. Um, I definitely consider myself as naturalist, uh, uh, having natural hair. Natural hair. Um, okay. You know, but someone could argue and say, no, you don't have natural hair because you colored it. And I'm not going to argue with them about it because I did color it. Wow. Let me have that lid on this pan. So we're going to give a good squirt of olive oil in our pan. And we're going to start with our, um, yeah, just give a good healthy squirt. Yep, that's good. And we'll start with our peppers and onions. Just throw them in a pan. Okay. Get some tongs there. And you want the onions in there too? Yep. Kind of stir them around a little bit. That is nice and colorful. Mm -hmm. yes, it smells good. <laughs> yes. All right, and we're gonna toss in our garlic. All righty. Toss in some of the garlic. Yep. There you good. go. And stir that. And we're gonna put our lid back on there. We don't really need a lot of oil for the. Uh, Fried cabbage because it's you know it's going to produce some water and moisture okay. all right. and all of that. So, um, how long have you been in business? How long have you been in business? You want to go first? Um, I've been in business. I would say I started my business in 2020. 2020. Um, I've always had a passion for natural hair and locks because mm -hmm. um, I had locks when in 2010 is when I first started locks. Okay. And so I, I started my business in 2020, and um, so it's just almost about February 2020, so almost four years. Okay. How long have you been in business? And I started Agape Beauty last year, so it's been all, a little over a year for me, going okay. back into Phil. Because getting I told back you, into it. Yeah, getting back into it and actually mm -hmm. going full force and having a legitimate, uh, a legitimate, legitimate business. Not in the kitchen. <laughs> not in the kitchen, <laughs> yes. Did you, uh, did you guys always have uh, natural hair or did you have perms back in the day? 
I mean, as an adult, not when your parents say, this is what you're going to wear. Yeah. But yeah. As adults, did you always have natural? No. Um, oh. I actually went natural, fully natural in 2012. Okay. Um, and I was, I had every type of hairstyle. Short hair, curly hair, weaves, quick weaves, sew-ins, braids, you name it, I had it. And I finally, you know, got more busier in my life and did a big chop and realized that my curl pattern was popping. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. so I've been natural so, since 2012. Yeah. How yeah. about you? I had a relaxer. I had a jerry curl. Um, right. And then in 2020 is when I decided to do the big chop. And I did a big chop, cut all the relaxer off, and then I started um, growing out my hair for about a month and a half, and then I started locks. I heard you both say big chop. What's that? Big chop is when you're basically cutting off all the altered hair that you have to its natural curly state. Some mm -hmm. people do it gradually. Some people just take off every, some people just go right in and mm -hmm. Maybe they want to shave their whole head because maybe they just got a relaxer okay. and they want their hair to grow in its natural state. So you're basically just chopping off the parts of the hair that's been chemically altered. Mm -hmm. when, when you do that, does, when the hair starts to grow back, is it like it was or how does the chemically altered affect what's going to grow back? You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, um, once you do the... Even if your hair was chemically altered, it's still going to grow back in its natural state. It may have a texture... You may have a texture change, though. Because I have seen where people say, wow, I did the big chop and now my hair is a lot softer or it's not uh, mm -hmm. as coarse. And so, a lot of people kind of experience a little bit of change, but that could have a lot to do with some other things, too. Like, maybe your diet or the... Uh, maybe the humidity or the area that you live in. So a lot of that kind of can take, um, can kind of make a difference, you know, how your hair grows back uh -huh. because you may be older, you know. So, you know, it, it just all depends. But for the most part, your hair will be, you know, curly or however it was before. It should revert back and grow out, you know, to how um, it would be like from birth or from, you know, over the years. Okay. How does, uh, we're here eating, we're having lunch. How does food affect our healthy hair? Uh, you want to take it or I can ask it partially? <laughs> like what um, role does food play? It plays a major part because there's a lot of vitamins. Open that up and okay. stir that in. Um, it smells so good. Yeah. I'm going to sit that right there. Okay. Yeah, I think that it plays a major part. Like vitamins, nutrients, water, all that, um can affect your hair, your hair growth, uh, the dryness of your hair, how much moisture it has. So I really think that uh, you should really be mindful. Throw in the cabbage okay. as well. Unless, um, you want yeah. to do it to me? Yeah. Um, you would, you, I think that you should really uh, be mindful of what you eat when you're trying to grow your hair um, to be a healthy state. Okay. Especially, and then especially the water intake because that, also um, plays a big role, a major role, in um, how moisturized your hair is. Okay, so I have a question about the moisture since you mentioned that a couple times. So what is actually moisture? So is, would uh, it be any liquid or is it an oil? Like if I put an oil on my hair, is that moisture? Or is it just water? Or like what actually is the moisture for our hair? On on the outside. Well, one thing that people don't realize is that oil is not a moisturizer. Okay. So if you think that you're going to have more moisture and you're going to add moisture to your hair, don't think oil. You know, think more of a water or a leave-in or something that's going to... Um, a leave-in... Like a leave-in conditioner, conditioner or something that's okay. going to provide um, moisture like glycerin. You can put all of it in there. Okay. So like glycerin... Um, would be good to start off with. Um, and these are things that you can purchase. And then also, um, there could be something like, um, what would be another, like, moisture, uh, a moisturizer besides, like, leave-in? Anything that's water-based. Because your hair needs hydration first, which is water. Which is the water. And then it needs moisturization. But okay. oil sometimes can be a sealant. So if you don't give your hair hydration first and it's dry and then you put oil on top of that thinking it's going to fix the problem, it could make it worse. 
Make? Yeah. Okay, I want to. So in those two things, there's a pat of butter. We're gonna put right. some butter in there, and we're gonna sprinkle in some uh, some of our jerk seasoning and the carrots. That's gonna be our seasoning okay. for this. Okay. You want to put okay. all of it in? Yes. And carrots. We're gonna to toss them around. Okay. Let let everything simmer, and then we'll cook it as long as do you guys prefer crunchy or softer vegetables? Uh, I like mine more crunchy. I do too. Okay. So we don't have to cook it as long. So nope. we're gonna stir everything in and then um, we'll put the top back on there and let that simmer. Okay. And while we're waiting on that, we'll get ready to throw our uh, lamb chops on. Yeah, so when you're shampooing, like if you go through a shampoo um, regimen, like in the morning or at night, you wanna shampoo your hair. You always wanna make sure you use a leave-in conditioner afterwards. Um, don't start with the oil or anything like that. Just use a leave-in conditioner because then that's going to make your hair, your your um, your scalp, you know, a lot more moisturized, and then it will last you throughout the day so that you won't have to keep doing it. Um, and then it may even last a couple of more, you know, a few days. How important is uh, scalp care? Like care for your scalp. Oh, that's like extremely hair. important. Yeah, because um, as far as your scalp is concerned, you want to make sure you have clean scalp. You want to make sure you don't have any buildup. And that's the thing, like some of the products that you use may cause buildup and it may cause your hair to, your scalp to be a little smothered. Um, and then there's a lot of things that, you know, cause you not to be able to rinse your scalp or shampoo your uh, products that may not be able to be shampooed or rinsed out, you know, as well. Like the oils? Yes. Okay. Like the oil. So you think you're getting a good shampoo when you're not. So you would want to make sure that you're using products that's not going to like remain in your hair or on your scalp because your scalp needs to breathe. Okay. Do you have a preferred um, shampoo product? You don't have to say the name. You could just say yes or no. Or if you want to say the name. Yeah, I do. I have, I, have, I have products that I absolutely like trust and believe in. Okay. And I use those in the salon. Um, I don't really like dibble and dabble with different products too much. I just use what we know works okay. and then we, you know, continue to use those. But, um, we also have advice for someone who wanted to use a shampoo at home. So then we have like a home, um, shampoo conditioner that you could use that you may not be able to go to a, um, professional beauty supply store to get, mm -hmm. but you can get it at the regular beauty supply store. Okay. Do you guys make products? Like, do you make conditioners and all those things and shampoos? Like your own that you would make for your salon? I have before, okay. um, not consistently. Um, sometimes, you know, as you get older, you develop allergies. Uh, um, so I had to stop experimenting on my scalp, per se, because I developed something called seborrheic dermatitis. Which is a really is bad. That? It's a really <laughs> bad. It sounds bad. It's, it's, yeah. It, in loose terms, it's like eczema in your scalp. Yeah. And you have oh. flare ups. So um, a lot would, of like. Would that be like really bad dandruff? Or? Yeah, it looks really bad. Oh. Yeah. And it usually comes in the form right here in the front where you don't want people to see. So right. a lot of. I have to cut out dairy because that was contributing to the inflammation mm. of my scalp. So. What? Yeah, you would be surprised at how many people have that condition. And it, we always advise them to go to a dermatologist. Um, sometimes it's something that they could get as a remedy, and then sometimes it's not. And they still are battling with this problem because they um, they have it, and it and it won't go away. What? So, yeah, um, dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis is like a, a really big um thing that people have been dealing with and they mm. they you know they don't know what to do is it is is this something that causes that or is it something that's genetic or um it could be different factors um me i just know once i started getting older i became sensitive to a lot of dairy so i cut it out and it improved it doesn't go away, doesn't go away. but it improves it's manageable okay. um we get a lot of clients who have all type of scalp issues okay. um especially our clients with locks Mm -hmm. Um, cause that can go into the lock and cause buildup in the actual mm -hmm. lock itself. And yeah. so when that happens, we always refer them to a dermatologist so they can get properly diagnosed. Sometimes they give them medicated shampoo and things like that. Um, but there's no specifically a cure for it. And no cure. my doctor told me that, you know, it's no known origin or cause of it. It's just something that something some people that just develop. So I'm going to switch a little <laughs> bit. So with, uh, 
uh, people not taking care of the hair, you have um, scalp issues, all the different types of dermatitis. People look at natural hair and they go, oh, that's dirty, that's nasty. It has like a bad stigma to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about the, I, I like natural hair and I think everybody should embrace it, but we have so many lanes for that, like different people's, not a standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. You should wear your hair like this. You shouldn't wear your hair like that. Like, how do you guys feel about that stuff? Um, we'll start with uh, other people's standards of beauty as it mm -hmm. relates to natural hair. Well, I try to actually educate clients mm -hmm. um, and change in the language. Okay. Um, we get a lot of kid clients too who, you know, their moms can't do their hair at home, so they send them to us. And sometimes they have a lot of hair, and we try to use positive words to make sure that they feel positive about their hair first off. Okay. Because that's kind of where it starts for most black women. What's a it word you would change? Like, not nappy, but... Not nappy, but your hair <laughs> is curly or coarse. It's curly. Or okay. or mm -hmm. I say healthy. I, I say natural hair or healthy hair is, like, long as it's healthy, you have good hair. You know, we have the stigma with us, good hair. Good but hair. good hair is healthy hair. Healthy like, hair. no okay. matter what texture it is. Not just long hair. Not just long hair long or a certain type hair. of texture. It's healthy <laughs> hair, so... Mm -hmm. So your hair can be 4C and it can be healthy. It can be healthier than mine and I ha I don't have 4C hair, you know. It just depends. What is 4C? What is that? 4C is the type of hair. So you have straight, wavy, curly, coily okay. hair. And then you have medium, small, or big curls. Some people's curls are bigger, smaller. So 4C is like a texture versus the type of curl you have. Yeah. I mean, to... to get more in depth it's like um your hair someone came up with this okay i don't know who <laughs> but someone came up with this and it's like one two three and four okay and then there's a b c and mm -hmm. d i guess well i've never heard of never d but d there is so, yeah. a b and c okay so basically um the hair strand can be um in diameter can be thicker than others and then also it can be more curlier or wavier than others. Okay. So the more, the higher you get up to um, the number, which is will be a four, then the more tighter coil you'll have. So if you're going to be a four C, which is um, C and four, then it would be a, a more coarse, coily type of hair. If you're like a one A, then your hair is very wavy and it's not as coily. If you're at two. Okay. 2B, then it's going to be a little bit less wavy and a little bit more coily. But the more you get to 4C, then the more tighter your coil your coil is. And that's when people say... The shrinkage. <laughs> the shrinkage is real. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to get our lamb chops on the griddle, and we will be right back. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, for helping me prepare lunch. I think you guys did a fantastic job. Thank Let's you. dig Thank in you. and see how we did. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. I want to taste these plantains. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah. That's mm. nice and tender. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not too spicy on the... Uh, Cabbage, mm -mm. good flavor. Planting our tender enough. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, we're not talking, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is good. Very good. Mm -hmm. You guys did a good job. <laughs> I will say so myself. I'm coming to your restaurant when y'all get that right. up. <laughs> Hair and eats. Hair and hair and eats. As long as we're not eating hair. As long as we're not eating hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> you get your plate on mm. your way out the door. <laughs> so we're gonna try to talk and eat at the same time. Cool. If we can. So the food is amazing. Are there any? <clears throat> you guys were talking earlier about the different textures and coils and all of that. That helped me understand that, oh, that's why somebody might have a, a wavy hairdo or, and all of that. When uh, your clients come in and they have a certain type of hair, do you recommend, will you tell them like, this is not gonna work for you? 
Do you like recommend them? Try as far as products go, styling. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. Someone may have finer hair, and they may want bigger locks or or more fuller style. Yeah, and you know they may not have that the density that they need to have that style to look as full as they would like. So, you know, we have to make sure that we style it in a way where it's not going to look so sparse or they're not going to see a lot of emptiness, especially if they're dealing with some kind of thinning on the top of their hair. They have to, you know, have a style that's going to make them feel a little bit more uh, comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about how they feel when they leave. Okay. So even if they show us a style, you know, sometimes... We don't add hair, so... Oh, you guys don't do that at all? No. So, if we have a style and we need to make it look a little bit more fuller, then it also determines, like, it's determined by the products that we use. Okay. And, the uh, you know, the parting, all of that, you know, can take effect to the style. Okay. And also being realistic <laughs> with the clients, some things just have to happen over time. It's a lot of things that we do to our hair that kind of damages it. And so that healthy journey may take some time. Okay. And so it's our job to educate our clients on their whole journey um, as they're coming back for their retwist and their just hair maintenance so they can understand how to care for their hair at home as well and not just wait until they come and see us okay. um, to do it. So not to hit on anybody in their hairstyle, but prior to getting locked and doing all that just big chop going natural, are there things that people do that really, really hurt the health of their hair? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to name Actually, a specific I mean, thing. But you can if you want to. Right now, we're in a place where um, wigs and weave and crochet and any kind of hair additions is starting to, like, really become damaging. Um, but... It's only damaging when things are done in an excessive way. Like, if you're going to wear a wig, don't wear it every single day. Or don't wear it to where you're going to feel the traction around your edges so that it's going to, you know, cause you to have hair loss. Hmm. Um, anything that you do, and that's including locks. If you get your hair lock, if you get a lock retwist, you know, don't do it um, more too than, soon. you know, too soon. Maybe, you know, four weeks is usually, you know, the normal amount of time, but sometimes people want to come in mm -hmm. every three weeks, every two weeks and get their hair retwisted. And anything that you do can become, you know, it can cause alopecia. Okay. So you mentioned alopecia. What is that? Alopecia is basically hair loss. Um, you can get uh, different forms of alopecia. Some are environmental, which is like coming from tensions, wearing like too tight um, hairstyles like uh, braids that's pulling uh, wigs with the glue that has like ingredients that makes the scalp inflamed can cause alopecia um, damage in the hair bulb um, from things that we do can cause alopecia and then you have alopecia that's uh, hereditary or genetic okay. um, and those are unknown factors and those can only be alopecia can only be diagnosed by a physician but it's different types can you recover from alopecia or can you, will your hair grow back if you have that? Um, the form of alopecia that's genetic or that's hereditary, more than likely no. Um, but things that we do to our hair, if we stop it before it gets bad, we can potentially save the hair bulb and the hair follicle where it does grow back. But sometimes things go too far and it's no coming back from that. So right. take care of your hair. Yeah. Take care of your... Even if you wear wigs <clears throat> and anything, you want to always take care of your hair and don't do anything excessively. Yeah, that's the key thing. I mean, if you're going to do a style, you know, we get used to wearing our hair a certain way. Mm -hmm. Take a break. You know, if you're going to wear braids, take a break. You know, I say in between the braid styles, you mm -hmm. got to do a deep conditioning treatment, a protein treatment, do a trim. You know, get all these things done and your cosmetologist should recommend these things to you before, you know, your next visit. Or say, hey, your next visit, you need to get a protein treatment or you need to get a trim. And then you can go back into your braids or you can go back into your sew-in. Like, this is a team effort. So I believe that if we know that our client is going to get braids or get a sew-in, then we just kind of help them along and just try to make it so that we know 
what they need because we know what type of service they're going to get in the future. Huh. And we're eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating and y'all was talking. I was like, let me eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how did you get into cooking? Mm. So at an early age, I'm from a large family and <clears throat> I, I uh, study at the uh, Institute of Louise. That's my mother. <laughs> <clears throat> so I uh, grew up cooking around her. Uh, come from a large family. So we had a cooked meal every single day, every meal, every day. And so to me, that was normal. And by the time, you know, you get older and everybody's got fast food and takeout. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Where's dinner? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so those things, um, I always liked home-cooked meals. Um, I liked what happened around uh, the dinner table the family, um, everybody talking, and, and all of those things. That, you know, the, the food kind of brings you together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, that's what I saw growing up. And, you know, I realized that I always um, enjoyed it. And so I did try to open up a fast food restaurant. That didn't work out for me. So I ended up at a bunch of different jobs. And I found my way back to it and just been going strong ever since. So this is what you're most passionate about? I think so. That mm -hmm. and family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the two most important things. I'm going to say family first because my family would look at me sideways if I said food is more important than that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are the things that I like. Like mm -hmm. anything food. I love food history. I like learning about food. I like learning about uh, seasonings and spice. Mm -hmm. Like I learned that um, jerk seasoning, those ingredients are very much um, indigenous to Jamaica. The allspice grows there. The nutmegs grow on the trees there. And But the cooking method is something that happened... Um, the people are in the mountains. They're trying to hide from the soldiers and not get caught while they're cooking their food. Mm -hmm. And so that's how they kind of came up with the smoking method for the jerk. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I like food. I like learning about food. I like, you know, authentic food from different places. And I think it you can learn about the people when you learn about the food. So, you know. Speaking of food, for me, I told you I grew up in a big family. So for me, food is love. That's what I think of. I think of my mother cooking and all the love she put into the food. Mm -hmm. Like, what does food mean to you guys? Like, what does it mean to you? Same thing for me. Okay. Um, I um, had kids younger, but I had all boys, so they could eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I learned how to cook mm -hmm. when I was about 14, 15. Hmm. Um, I come from a big family as well. Okay. I don't have, like, a lot of siblings, but I have a lot of cousins. And okay. I grew up in grandma's house where everybody hung out. Okay. So it was always food around. Yeah. Um, I'm the cooker in my friend circle, so anytime come somebody come visit me, they want me to cook. Oh. My sister, we always kind of live close to each other, and she always wants me to cook. So cooking is that food is definitely love for me, too. It's how I show my appreciation to people because, oh, I mean, relate. yeah, everybody wants to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think, and for me, um, it's about traditions. Okay. Um, a lot of my cooking comes from my grandmother and my mother, so I try to carry out a lot of those mm -hmm. recipes. Um, especially when we bake our, uh, yeast rolls wow. and yeah, so it's a big special thing. Special family it's recipe? A, it's a, yes, it's a special family recipe, tea cakes and things like mm. that. Um. I haven't heard that in a long time. Mm-hmm. And so we try to like pass it down to our children to, mm. so that they can learn how to make these things as well. So food is definitely, um, one of those togetherness type things that we use to remember, um, our loved ones. Wow, I like it. And it's still eating. These plantains are the bomb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So getting back to actually food, <clears throat> do you guys recommend um, not a specific diet for a person specific type of hair how healthy it is but do you recommend um vitamins absolutely absolutely vitamins yes. and they yeah. even have stuff on the market where you have vitamins specifically for your hair for your hair biotin it's a it's a known well known vitamin for your hair they have mm -hmm. vitamin e is good for your yep. for your hair as well protein mm -hmm. protein mm, like iron um all of that is you know it should be a part of your diet. Um, 
Protein is actually in your hair anyway. Carrot it's called keratin. Car okay. And you know, if you have a lack of keratin in your hair, then that causes breakage. It causes shedding. Um, and then I would recommend like if you had uh, any of that going on every three months or so, you should get a protein treatment. Um, Are any of those things you can do at home or do you have to go to a no. salon? No. Yeah, you can do it at home. You can do it at okay. home. And that's a lot of um, what we do. We always recommend, you know, go get... You know, at our salon, we have a beauty supply store right next door. So okay. we are able to go next door and walk them through and, you know, point out what you should use. And we don't have any problem with doing that. So if you take care of your hair good at home, then it'll leave us to be able to know what's going on. You have a better once. starting point. Oh, oh Absolutely. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, question about uh, both of you guys have color. Yes. Is it permanent? Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How do you get it? Just cut it out? You definitely got to cut it out. <laughs> yep. You got to cut it out. Or um, if I want to go back to my natural color, then I could use another permanent hair color to uh, cover it up, which would be like a natural black. My hair is pretty brown, but I could do like a natural black. Or, But um, I would say that since I have locks, I may end up having like a little bit of red or a little bit of orange see-through. Um, but I also could use like a toner and something... You know, there, there are steps to it to where I can get my hair get back to, natural to its color. natural color, but okay. it's a process. It's not easy. It's, wow. And you're going to have some shedding and you're going to have some, uh, you know, you're going to have some things that you have to deal with when it comes to color because color is one of those things that is not the safe way to, you know, get to healthy hair. Oh. Uh -huh. It's, it's, it's one of the least safe ways. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for a person like me who's past 25, and <laughs> you want to, um, how do you deal with gray? We either can cover it up or you can <laughs> yeah. embrace it. <laughs> Those are the options? Yeah. Embrace it. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, like, I like the gray. Yeah. yeah I'm gray. Well, I've had gray hair since I was a kid, technically. Okay. So I'm kind of used to it. It's just not as prominent. Um, you know, it's prominent, more prominent now. Um, than before, but um, sometimes I do gray coverage. Sometimes I just roll with it. Mm -hmm. Why does gray hair seem so unruly? Like, what's happening to the hair that? Doesn't oh wanna... my goodness! That's right. one of the biggest problems we have. <laughs> <laughs> that that gray hair is vicious. Yeah. Okay. I don't care how much you slick it's... it down. It's going. <laughs> yeah. What is it, it? It's lacking. It's lacking a lot of things. It, oh. You know, it doesn't have any melanin, and it doesn't. Ha it doesn't take on moisture like it should. Um, it's stubborn. It's very, yeah. <laughs> so, I it's don't... It's more coarse sometimes, too. I don't know. It, it, a lot of people, they end up just dealing with it. Because okay. um, there are some things that you can do to prevent it from having, like, a yellowness to it, a yellow tint. You may have, like, some things that you may eat or you may um, drink, you know, may cause your gray hairs to not look as beautiful as they should. So we have different shampoos that you can actually use to make them. So how should they look like a silvery whitish? It should color. be a silvery yeah. whitish color, not anything yellow or dingy or, you know. So if you see that, you think, oh, this person's not healthy or they're not doing something right. They're not doing something, something right. right. Yeah, it can uh, be from heat damage. Uh, a lot of people get silk presses now. Right. In the silk press season. Silk press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taking the hair from what is that? taking the hair from curly to straight with the uh, heating oh, tools. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does um does heat damage our hair? Absolutely. It could. Yes. It it could. could. I think it's like three hundred degrees. Is is that part? Is that temperature where it's okay as long as you're using a heat protectant? But if you go over that, then you definitely have to use like some type of heat protectant or um, like a thermal, a product. thermal product, you know, so mm -hmm. that you can protect the hair against all that heat. Because normally people are using, you know, 350, 375, 400, 400, 450. Yes. And that is really damaging, especially to grays. It's going to make your gray hair just completely a different color. And just to go back to the grays, if you have gray hair, um, sometimes it could be because of the medicines that you are taking or something like that. So, so, so many things. So it's many so many practice. things. How about, uh, I, like you said, you got grazed early. Yeah. So, what, um, genetically. Yes. 
can you make your hair gray hair go away? Does it go away or that's it? That's no, they just keep coming it. back <laughs> and no, more I mean, and like, more. Can you change the color of your gray? You temporarily. Where does it come back gray? No, they're gonna Once always gray, come it. back. They're gonna always come back, and sometimes they come back more after you try to color it because you notice yeah. it more. Uh, okay. <laughs> you notice it more like when you do like your gray coverage mm -hmm. and you the first day in the salon great the next two days you see four new gray like where the heck did that come from <laughs> so yeah they 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 come with avengers sometimes yeah i mean i'm i'm okay with my gray just Me too. wondering like how much more is it going to be eventually you'll just turn yeah. completely gray or for some people yes some people no but i'm it depends. It's also hereditary, you mm -hmm. know. So if you have your um, father or your mother turn gray when they were twenty five, you may end up. That's what you you're know. looking at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So when did you become comfortable with your gray? That's what I want to know. When it first came in. And when was that? No, that's a lie. My gray came in in my forties, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize I was graying. And my hair, this is a funny story. Not really funny. It's kind of stupid, actually. But and I, I'm dusting my hair. I was like, what is that in my hair? I kept messing with it. I kept messing with it. And I actually called my son. I was, like, clipping pieces off. I was like, I can't, whatever, I can't get it out of my hair. And I was like, that's gray hair. I was, I didn't realize. Right. Like, if you, you know, you, you don't look at it like that. But, yeah. It's, yeah. But I'm okay with it. I, I, yeah. Um, I have had family members who they have gotten gray hair when they were nine years old and you know i have clients that have their their kids have gray hair at nine and ten years old so um i'm not sure if this is something that is hereditary for them or if it's something that um is they're eating or people say stress you know also causes gray hair so i don't i don't know but there is no cure for gray hair. All right. I'm okay with my gray hair. Me too. What I'm not okay with is the prospect of balding. Mm. <laughs> I don't think anybody's okay with that. That's so, a form of alopecia, by the yes. way. Is it? It like is. Male pattern baldness oh, and yeah. all that stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. But it seems like it happens to everybody. It does not happen to everybody. But it can happen to a lot of people, a lot of especially men, especially. Men, yeah. So they get one version of alopecia more than other types. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, men deal with balding at a very a lot sooner than women do, and a lot of times, if a woman if a, if a woman is going to be um, losing her hair, usually it's thinning, not balding. Okay, so in women, how do you address thinning? <laughs> oh. Thinning. Um, First, they, we need to determine if it's something medically going on, which they need to go to see a physician to kind of rule that out. Because mm -hmm. mm. um, sometimes it can be due to medications that they're taking. Um, it can be due to something hereditary that we can't combat. Mm -hmm. um, or, again, it could be due to what we're actually doing to our hair. If it's something we're doing to our hair... We can possibly catch it and stop it and use products like thickening agents, thickening shampoos and shampoos that have good ingredients or clean ingredients, per se, to kind of get the hair back to a more um, thicker state. Yeah, and also postpartum. Um, postpartum alopecia um, caused by a woman who has had a child, um, someone who has gone through surgery. So uh, chemotherapy also uh, definitely mm -hmm. so those are all forms of alopecia so they do have thickening shampoos um that you can use and there's also some other like products oils and there's a whole thing a whole thing out there right now with um hair growth oils and greases does they and... really work i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> they say they do Oh, but, but you wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I, I, we I haven't tried and, oh, and showed okay. it, proven to do that, because everything doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't. It's really a case-by-case -case basis. It is a case-by-case -case basis. Everybody has their own story. Did I say y'all did good on this food? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Yeah, you did good because this is the first time I cooked Jamaican lamb uh, jerk lamb chops and plantains. My plantains didn't taste like this. Mm. <laughs> Mine didn't either. I tried. They was like plantain chips. <laughs> oh, those are good. <laughs> that wasn't what I was going for, though. Mm-mm. You ever thought about locking your hair? Yeah. I thought about it. And what happened? I just thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> but I, I've, I've been fortunate to always have, like, long-ish hair. Mm-hmm. So, like, my whole life, so, as a kid, I remember my mother would... She would actually uh, do the straightening comb and give us a James Brown, you know, mm-hmm. in the 70s, 80s. Everybody wanted to. The I wanted Lyman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wanted the uh, Michael Jackson, but she wasn't feeling that. But, yeah, oh, the that. infamous Jerry girl. So, <laughs> no Jerry. I mean, just the big afro. 70s Michael. Okay. Like that. Mm. So, but, um, yeah, I thought about it. Just, it seems like a, a commitment. Like, you it know, is. commitment to it. And that's just what it's going to be. And I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people think that starting locks is, even though it, you don't have to worry about your hair all the time, it is a big commitment, and it is work. But it's it's not permanent to yeah. me, because I comb my locks out. I had very long locks. You, you've combed them out before? I combed them out. Okay. In 2020, I combed them out, and my hair was past my shoulders, okay. and I just decided... Hey, let me see if I can, you know, take care of my hair in this loose natural state. So I decided to comb them out, and it took me a month to do it, but you know, it was yeah. worth it. I, it, it just, it. That's why when people say, "Oh, it's such a commitment," and it's, it's something that is so permanent. It really is not. It doesn't have to be permanent. It, doesn't have it does to be not permanent. have to be permanent. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time, and your hair does go through um, phases, a phase, and it it can be damaging afterwards. But, you know, to say, like, oh, it's a permanent and I can't go back, that's not true. So most people think you just have to cut it out when you want it out, but you can (laughs) comb it out. Mm -hmm. Some instances you have to cut them out. It's so many different type of locks now. Mm -hmm. Like, people that had locks last week and now they can have locks, instant locks. That's how I started my hair. Mm -hmm. I have very soft, curly hair. So I tried to do the process before. And it, I just wasn't patient enough. I, oh. <laughs> so I just went to the method where they do it with the tool and lock it. It still has to go through like a maturity phase, mm-hmm. but that was for me what worked for my hair and my journey because I didn't have to go through certain phases where my hair was clumping all together and yeah. just frizzy. She's and... like a what a, like a two B or something. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have different curl <laughs> patterns in my hair and different textures, you know. Okay. Um, I have Native American in my blood, so, you know, mm-hmm. I, I come back. I have uh, 4C here. I got 3A here. It's just so everybody's all showing up place. On yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's another thing. Like, a lot of people have different textures in their hair. Yeah. And different curl your, patterns. The one part of your, your head may not be the same all over. Okay. So, yeah. you know, that's it's... True. It 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 all just depends, um, and then different products may not work the same all over your head. You know, like, oh, it gets real curly and wavy right here, but back here it just struggle. Mm-hmm. What actually is locks? Like, what is that? Your hair just intertwine? Yeah, it's, it's just staying. It's a uh, it's it's really a process that your hair goes through. Um, it's a uh, your hair interlocks into. Okay. Um, and, and it, it tangles to the point where you can't just easily just comb it out. Oh. So if you just wanted to lock your hair, you wouldn't need to go to a professional to get it done. You would just not comb it. And that would make you have locks. You would have, like, what would they call a freeform lock? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they would have a freeform lock. And your hair, like, it's already kind of locking a little bit. <laughs> It always wants to lock in the back first. Too. Yeah. I told you last week. <laughs> so, oh, so you're locking. Right. <laughs> you're locking until you comb it out. No. So with our hair, that's the great thing about our hair is that we have a hair type that can go that way if we wanted it to. And that's one good thing about texture hair is if uh, you wanted to come and get it professionally locked, then we would, you know, go over that whole process with you about parting and you know, whether you want diamonds or you want squares or you want triangles. And so it's like become a whole thing now. Do those things actually matter for the health of your hair? 
It, it does. It really does. Because, you know, like I said earlier, the density of your hair is going to determine, you know, how your locks come out. So if you have your, your parting is, you say, oh, I want diamond parts, you know, but your hair density may not, you know, have, it, it may not, you may not be able to enjoy it as much you know, as maybe like a half moon part or something a little bit okay, that's going to give you. you a little bit more fullness. I guess. So, you know, I, I think that, that all that has something to do with the healthiness of it. Huh. I'm going to follow your suit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you said your hair was two shoulders. Mm, now here. Can a hair, hair be too heavy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like if you have long locks. Yes. Will that damage your scalp? And it can cause, cause thinning. Hair? It'll cause thinning? Yeah, it can cause mm -hmm. thinning. So you'll have to just cut it off. How do you know when is a good length that is not too heavy? Is and there such a so thing? Many, it's different factors. Because some, some people have very small locks where they get longer... Um, and depending on the density of the hair, too. So if they get longer, some people locks feel lighter. And even though it's long, it's not as heavy. Some people locks are thicker, where when it does get long, it starts that traction and pulling at the scalp. So it can cause thinness. So you want to kind of trim it down some and, and release some of that heaviness, the bulk of the hair from the bottom. So it will thin at the root. So it's different factors. Because there's so many different type of locks and so many different type of hair textures. It's really... A kind of a case by case basis. Yeah. Do you guys ever work with um, non African American clients who want something like that? Like, like as far as locks? Yeah, and they have like straight hair. Um, I haven't personally. Mm -hmm. um, I have not. Um, I have had someone come that was maybe um, mixed. They were Af African American and uh, Hispanic, mm -hmm. and they hair locks. Yeah. They're here. Uh, actually, when I first started, um, actually, when I moved to Georgia, I had someone that was uh, Caucasian. She had locks, and she offered to do my hair. So I, she did my hair, and she did a great job. I mean, so and she had locks, so I really trusted that she knew what she was doing. So, I see that often. Usually you don't see, you that don't see that often. often. Yeah. yeah. But, but you're seeing there. it more. You're seeing yeah, it more yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and people say, so, oh, my hair is not coarse enough because it won't lock, you know, it, it won't lock. But truth be told, it will, it will. lock. If that you was the stigma. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought you were done. No, go ahead. <laughs> that was the stigma that I had growing up because I, of my texture hair. When I would express that I wanted to start locks in my circle, oh, you can't lock. You got, you got that good soft hair. <laughs> like, it's not going to lock up. And me not knowing, like, curly hair locks. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So once I, you know, did my research and we got more advanced and times changed and with the, the advancement of social media mm -hmm. and YouTube being like a lot of people's university. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I can lock. Like, I'm screwed up. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm locking my hair. <laughs> Her hair locked faster than like a person who you would think had really coarse hair. Mm -hmm. Her hair locked. I mean, even with her doing the instant lock thing, she still like transitioned into a nice lock, mm -hmm. locked head of hair without having to do anything else. So, you what know, is instant locks again. What is that? So there's a, a a crochet needle. It's very fine and it has like a little hook at the end. And you basically part and doing your parts and you're going through the shaft of the hair and you're actually manipulating it and tangling it up down the shaft of the hair to make it lock. So oh. you instantly get locked mm -hmm. instead of going, starting with like uh, two strand twists or coils or braids and waiting for that process for it to start condensing together and lock up itself. So do you, you guys actually, have a preferred method? Like, do you, I mean, I know it's different for every person. For me, it was the instant lock method. I tried the coils, and it was a nightmare for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did coils. Um, my daughter, she's locked. She did two-strand twists. Um, my son, he did coils. And then my other son did two-strand twists. Mm -hmm. So they yes. all, at, in the end, they all look the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may be able to see uh, a different pattern until a certain point. But then after that, it's just like everybody looks the same. Mm -hmm. huh? You guys have any more questions for me? I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. Is there anything, excuse me, you'd like to share with everybody? 
Well, um, our salon is I Am Natural Hair and Beauty Studio, and it's located in Snellville. Uh, we're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can call and make an appointment, 678-986-6164, or you can go online and make an appointment on vagaro.com um, forward slash I Am Natural Hair and Beauty Studio. Where can they find you? Uh, same thing. I'm on TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram at Agape Beauty. Uh, my um, Instagram handle is Agape, and that's spelled A-G-A-P-E underscore beauty 360. Um, and also, you can book with me under the Vagaro app as well under the I Am Natural Hair Studio. It's, I'm a stylist it's there. It's called a Vagara? Vagara. Vagara mm -hmm. app. Yes. Okay. It's a booking app. It's a booking app. Yes. <laughs> you can tell I haven't used it. <laughs> We're in the day and age of technology, yeah. so we don't yeah. do books anymore. We actually mm -hmm. have a booking app where clients can go and, and look at pictures and styles and prices and, and ask questions and kind of like be their own, you know, um, their own guide to getting their services done. Yeah. We take children as um, early as two years old. Um, to 12 years old is our children's services, and then we also have um, men, women, and everybody. All right. Same for you? Yes, and I also am a um, makeup artist as well, so I do makeup as well. So I do it all. That's why it's yeah. like I got a 360. I 360. do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's the stuff you don't do. What is it that you don't do? Oh. Uh, relaxers. <laughs> <laughs> Quick weaves. <laughs> Knotless braids. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot that I don't do as well. Everything's listed on Vagaro, though. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I think we are done. We're going to keep eating, but thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you us. for having us. I we learned a lot this. about hair. Yes. I'm going to consider locks. I'm mm -hmm. going to keep thinking about it. Yes. Keep thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You think it enough, it's going to become... <laughs> <It's> gonna... <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, let me tell you, they say, oh, I should have done this sooner. That is the... That's the first thing first they thing say. they say when they do it. I'm still thinking. But we don't ever try to convince anybody to get locked. No. We just, you know... Convince you to keep your hair healthy. Yes, I think that's the most important. Yeah, it's the hair. most important. Most important thing, healthy hair. Oh, and I forgot, we are also located in um, a unique... Styles, uh, unique styles suites, and that is uh, that's the entire building. Okay. And then we all we have a studio within that building. So most okay. people, you know, they're doing like studios now, mm -hmm. and so we have a, a three chair studio. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, again, it is always, 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 always our goal to share good people, good food, and good conversation. Hope you guys enjoy this. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time.